Up until a few days ago, I did not know anything about cars and the fact that now you need subscriptions for car stuff and my mind was blown. So this is why we're watching this video today because I I am still in shock and I cannot believe this. I don't own a car, right? So like, what the heck is happening to the world? When I enter my house, I open the garage, I enter the house, I get out of my car, I walk to the door, and when I want the light to be on, I flip the fucking light switch that's right next to my garage. Why in hell, what, why the fuck would I give you $15 a month to be able to turn the light on in my house remotely when I could just turn the light on when I get home by doing this? Are you insane? Who the fuck would pay extra money for this? Who voted in this survey? Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I wanted to read you the results of some interesting surveys that were what? done about consumer interest in subscription required connected services for your car. On this channel, I tend to not be a fan of subscription services. There are some very rare times where I could at least be somewhat forgiving, like in the Waves case where we're talking about three to $7,000 plug-in bundles being made available for $15 a month, where I can at least kind of look at it and go, okay, fine. Maybe that's not the worst thing in the world, even if I prefer to still have the option to be able to buy something. But for the most part, I'm not a fan of the you will own nothing mm -hmm. and be happy world. I like being able to own things. If I have seat heaters that I purchased in my car, if I give BMW 72,000 effing dollars and my car came with a seat heater, you bet your ass I am ripping that shit open to put my own switch in there if you think you can charge me monthly for what I already paid for. What the actual heck, man? Like, I completely agree. I'm of the same opinion. I think that if you purchase something and it's in my house, I, like, I'm sorry. Like, it, it is mine. You do not get to, like, nickel and dime me and ask a subscription. I hate subscription for shit, man. So this is an interesting little survey. One thing to keep in mind is that several of these things actually cost more money per month. So this is $10 extra month, $2 monthly. This is a $400 feature. What the heck? In tender interest and subscription required connected services. All right. But all of these different features that I'm reading are on top of a $15 monthly in vehicle <laughs> charge. So you're going to give Chevy or Ford or Toyota or Tesla $15 a what? month. And then on top of it, you may have to pay extra for this stuff. So internet connection enables connected features and includes Wi-Fi hotspot. 30% said fine. You know, okay, fine. They will pay uh, that. I mean, that's fine, even though I don't really see why you would want internet connection in your car when you already have your phone. Like, eh? You know, they'll, they'll pay for that. And okay, I, I kind of get it. You know, maybe you don't know that your phone has a mobile hotspot feature. Uh -huh. Again, my phone allows exactly. me to do this. I can turn on mobile hotspot right over here. I'm limited to like 10 or 15 gigabytes on AT&T before it gets throttled to crap. But that's still 10 to 15 gigabytes a month. That's usually good enough if I'm just in my car. And most people already have a phone on them that they're paying exactly. for a data plan. On. Meaning exactly. again, why would I pay for my car to have the hotspot when I have a hotspot on my phone? Exactly. You can't tell me that you don't have a freaking mobile internet connection. Like, why would you want it in your car when you can just use your freaking phone for that? Like, just hotspot. Which I have used when I've been parked and needed to do some work on my laptop. 30% said that they pay for internet connection in their car, though. 23% said that they would pay to remotely control certain features in their car or functions from their phone. So that's $10 a month. Now, that $10 a month is on top of the $15 a month what you're paying for your car already. So, again, you're paying $15 a month to have your car online. And on top of that $15 a month, once your car is online, uh-uh-uh, if you want to be able to control the air conditioner from your car using the software that you already bought when you bought the fucking car, you're now going to have to pay them an additional $10 per month to do so. So if you want to be able to say, okay, set, turn on the air conditioner so that before you come down the elevator of your building and walk over to your car, which is sitting in a parking lot in Texas, 109 degree summer heat, you have the AC on. That's understandable. This is something that people were able to do via remote mm. start. But again, the range on remote start only goes so far. Remote start, which is, again, free. Really like, like the remote start and the key fob is free. That is something that oh, you know, you're not going to adjust the temperature of your AC or the fan or anything like that. If you want to be able to do that from your phone, well, pay us again. Again, you paid $15 a month for your car to be connected. Now you got to pay $10 a month extra for that. And that's like, oh my god. Like, first of all, just having your car connected, like, you're paying for the fact that your car is connected. In most cases, that doesn't even benefit you. That benefits the pieces of shit that are taking your data and what they're doing with it and selling it to someone else and, like, training on your data and your habits and what you're doing and monitoring you. It's like, nice. You're, you're basically paying for them making a profit off of you. Nice. I, I like that. 
And there was about, let's see, according to this, 23% were interested in that. And that I can kind of understand. Again, people want to be able to do things like, you know, open or close the door from really far away. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm 100 miles away. Can you open, can you start the car? Something like that. Or for the most part, I think people are using this to be able to turn on <laughs> heated seats, heated steering wheel, and the heat and stuff like that. Even if they're for far enough from their car that the key fob doesn't work, but they're close enough oh, that by God. the time they get to it, they will still be cold getting into the car if the heat's not on kind of thing. So I can kind of understand it. I don't. I don't. I mean, I understand the perspective of like, it's really warm and you want your car to already be cool when you get there. But come on, is $10 a month, sorry, $25 a month total, right? Is that worth the fact that you're not gonna instantly go into a freezer in summer or like a, a sauna in winter? Is it worth the $25 a month? <sighs> Even if I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Stream video content directly to the center of the infotainment screen. I'm not paying you $15 a month to stream to my freaking car. I have a phone. If I want to watch stuff on my car, all I can do is I can buy a $10 phone mount, put it like this, turn the phone into landscape mode while I'm parked, uh -huh. and watch stuff on my phone. Further, in spite of the fact that I'm giving you more money every month to be able to watch it in my car, I can guarantee you it's going to be filled with ads and other BS. You know <laughs> that if you give Chevy your Ford or Tesla money to be able to watch stuff in your car, they're going to find some way to put ads in there. On my phone, using oh Graphene OS, God. I have the ability to use applications like Newpipe that allow me to view YouTube videos without seeing any ads. They allow me to use Adblock in my browser and on other streaming services. There are many ways that I can view things on my phone where it's not only more convenient than in my car, but also I don't have to deal with ads. The same way that I probably will in my car. How much do you want to bet that the YouTube viewer in my car is going to allow all the ads through versus <laughs> something like Newpipe that I can install on my phone? or YouTube Vanced that allows me to not see it. And oh, how much do you want to bet that whatever Jesus operating Christ. system is running on my car, I can guarantee you they're not going to let me install new pipe or YouTube Vanced or Adblock on there to be able to block ads and stuff like that. Above mm -hmm. all, I'm already paying to be able to do it on my phone. I'm already paying to be able to Jesus watch this stuff on my Christ, phone. Why do I want to use my car's interface? Why do I want to reproduce this in my car when I already have it on my phone? <laughs> because obviously your car has a bigger screen, so duh, it's worth it. Oh, why do people want this feature? Why would you want to stream it? Like, sure, I understand it. You're like, you're hanging out with your best buds in the car and stuff. Like, maybe the mobile isn't that big, but like, just buy a cheap tablet. <sighs> this is taking advantage of lazy. Like, ultimate convenience of laziness. And this is like, <sighs> it's the people with too much disposable income ruining it for everyone else. Which probably is a better interface than the garbage in my car. Next up, hazard notification with rerouting, $2 monthly. So you have to pay $15 a month to have your car online, and then an additional $2 a month if you want the map to reroute you when there's an issue. What? Or you can use Google Maps for free, or you can use organic maps. Hell, you can have a separate profile on your phone where you're not logged in using a normal account uh, if you're using Graphene OS, so that Google Maps doesn't even know who you are, but you get all the routing benefits of Google Maps for free. If you can use Google Maps on your phone for free with hazard routing, or you can use organic maps on your phone if you don't want to deal with Google, why would I pay you an additional $2 to have this type of rerouting? Why, again, honestly, why would I even use my car? You know how many people I see that have an <gasps> infotainment system built into their car that has a port for maps that still have their phone hanging up because their phone at the end of the day just fundamentally is a better interface. Yep. It's just yep. not only is it a better interface, but usually putting your phone over here and having it like this on the stand is much easier than an infotainment screen that's off to the side over there that's pointing this way i get my phone point like no like my dad's car has like a whole gps system and maps and shit and it is still easier to just take the phone and quickly type the address and get perfect directions with updated traffic info than it is to write it on a freaking monitor of the car have your address found and then get like shitty directions from a freaking voice that speaks as if it's i don't know uh, unable to reproduce more than two words per minute they're like and now take a laugh it's just like every time my dad argues with a bloody ai voice and he's like can you tell me faster what to do i'm just like that just just use your phone i i put the phone and the phone's like take a left i hate that gps voice it is so slow and so dumb and so annoying it doesn't tell you anything and if you are god forbid going more than 30 kilometers per hour i'm sorry it's not gonna tell you directions in time no i mean 
Well, let me Thank pay you. more for that. More interest in that. Browse the internet directly on the center infotainment screen. And again, why would I want to do that? I can use Brave Browser over here on my laptop or my desktop. I can use that on my phone. There are so many ways that you can use brow uh, different types of ways to block ads on your phone so that you are not seeing ads when you're visiting websites. I would use my phone. If I want to browse the web, if somebody sends me a link via Signal or Telegram or Discord mm -hmm. or WhatsApp or Matrix or email or anything else, I'm not going to figure out a way to send that link to my car so that I can then use the internet connection in my car that I have to pay extra money for to use this crappy infotainment <laughs> screen to browse it when I could just use my phone, which again, 99% of the time is going to be better than whatever's in your car. See, the thing is with a car, when you buy a car, you're typically buying a car. You're not buying the infotainment system. The deciding factor in purchasing a car is going to be things like gas mileage, speed, mm -hmm. comfort, mm -hmm. you know, how it rates in a crash, uh, durability, repairability, comfort. It's not going to be the infotainment screen. I've never heard somebody say, man, I could get this used car for $6,000. It has amazing gas mileage. It's really durable. Oh. It's very comfortable inside. It handles like a dream, but the infotainment screen just doesn't look the way I like, so I can't buy it. That's not the way people buy cars. People, when it comes to purchasing a smartphone, that really matters to them. How snappy the screen in the smartphone is. Uh, you know, what apps mm -hmm. can I install on it? How intuitive is it? How's the user interface? That's very important because that's literally all you're buying. When you're buying a smartphone, that's, that, that, that's all you care about. When you're buying a phone, that, that's its primary function. They need that to be perfect because that's its primary function. You don't have all these other things that you're going to be rating it on. So your phone has to be perfect there. Whereas a car can have an absolute garbage infotainment system <laughs> and still sell because there's so many other things that matter. So because of that, yeah. my phone, 99% of the time, is going to be light years ahead of whatever garbage is in mm -hmm. the car. And that's when the car is new, much less when the car is five or six years old and this shit's yep. all old and crusty compared to what you can get on a modern smartphone. It gets better, though. Remotely control your home. Utilize your voice to remotely control, unlock, turn off lights, etc. from your vehicle. 17% said they show interest in that. Why? Why? You literally have the system on your phone again. Like, if you really want to, you can have it on your fucking phone. Why? Wait, like, I swear, this is people randomly clicking on shit on their survey. Like, they'll up. Uh, the, in the survey, there should be a thing saying, I do not want any of the shit. Why is that not an option? <laughs> Sleep well, Colin. Even 17% is surprising to me. It's very low, but it's 17% more than what it should be, which in my opinion is zero. There's no way in yeah. hell I'm paying you a monthly fucking fee to be able to turn on or off lights in my home. When I enter my house, I open the garage, I enter the house, I get out of my car, I walk to the door, and when I want the light to be on, I flip the fucking light switch that's right next to my garage. Why in hell, what, why the fuck would I give you $15 a month to be able to turn the light on mm -hmm. in my house remotely when I could just turn the light on when I get home by doing this? Are you insane? Who the fuck would pay extra money for this? Who voted in this survey? Okay, play video games directly on the center infotainment screen. 14% Why? they would pay extra money to be able to play games in their car. I bought Street Fighter Alpha 3 when I was like 13 years old. Just get a phone or a Switch or a Steam Deck, you pieces of shit. Stop paying $15 a month on your car service. Save up the money and actually invest in something that can play games properly. Oh my god. What? Why? Why? <laughs> that shit cost me $40. If I want to take that $40 game that I paid for, like damn near 20 years ago, I can still play that game today without paying a monthly fee. Why would I pay you a monthly fee to play a goddamn video game? Are you insane? I could buy a game on my phone for $4. And if I want to play that game, I can play it on my phone without paying you a monthly fee to play it in the fucking car. How many people that are watching this video have a phone? Even if you have a $50 smartphone, a $50 phone is 99% of the time still going to be more capable of playing a game than your car because yeah. many people tend to buy cars that are a few years old to save money. So a 2020 phone that costs $50 is probably going to be better at playing a game than a 2016 car that costs $40,000. It's probably going to have a better processor on it. Why would you pay extra for that? Sharing of driving behavior with insurance companies and lower premiums. Would. Okay, so you're going to pay $15 a month for your car to connect to the internet so that you can lower your insurance. So, and by the way, have you ever seen the what you get when you put that beacon in your car? They lower your insurance by like three to eight dollars. It's a joke. It's negligible. Not only is your insurance company spying on your driving, but you're paying more money for it. 
all so that you could just lower your premium. So pay $15 a month to save eight. Now, 13% said yes to that. And again, while that number is low, I'm pretty sure that the number is low, 13%. That's still 13% more than it should be, in my opinion. You're paying extra so you can save some money. Like, oh, oh, God, please help me. Like, why is this the thing? Why? Why? What is wrong with car subscriptions? Partake in video conferencing using the center infotainment screen. 13% said yes to this. Your phone already does this. You don't need to do, you use your center screen for video conferencing. I like how the entire video is literally, uh, hello, you have phones? Don't you guys have phones? Uh, phones exist, guys. Hello. I know you don't know how to use your phone, but like, you're probably not going to use the car features either if you don't know how to use your phone. <laughs> Just saying. This is insane. A, again, if I put my phone on a $10 stand, I can move it to the side so it's actually facing me. Whereas the screen in the center infotainment is going to be pointed this way instead of this way. B, my phone is free and already does this. If I get a link to a Jitsi meeting or a Zoom meeting or whatever on Discord or Signal or Slack or WhatsApp or whatever, I can just click that on my phone. I don't want to have to figure out some way to get the meeting URL over to my car I don't want to figure out how to do that or how to sync that. If mm -hmm. I get a message on my phone, which is how I'm going to get the message that I need a meet to do a meeting, whether email or something else, I'm going to click that message on my phone and then I'm going to open it on my phone. Like there's also the thing is like you don't even know if something is compatible. You're not, they're not going to bother to make it compatible with all the things that are out there that your phone already has. That's already a big issue. Like especially when it comes to Apple, they weren't allowing, I think they weren't allowing Fortnite on it. They got fined for it. And it's like, who dictates what apps get verified and what you can and cannot use? Like you're going to pay for a service that you might not even be able to use its features of. Like, huh? That's the way this works. 99% of the population, even if their car was capable of dealing with email, nobody's going to do this. Like nobody. Nobody's yeah, going to decide, to I'm going to type my email username, password, and server, and my signal info, and my Telegram, and WhatsApp, and Discord, and Slack, all into my car computer, so that when I receive a message with an invitation to a video conference, I'm going to click that message on my car interface. Like, just like nobody's doing this. They're doing this on their phone. Now, there are things like Android Auto, where you can take whatever's going on in your phone and have it in your car. But again, that's separate from this. I don't, if, if, even if I'm using that, I'm still going to use my phone camera and everything. Like, I'm just... Uh, mm. Remote notification and live streaming of vehicle events. This is $400. So not only do you have to pay $15 a month for the remote vehicle service, but in order to view the cameras that you paid for when you bought the car, <laughs> after paying them $15 a month for the internet to give you access to those cameras, you have to give them $400 for their blessing. Eleven. <laughs> rather make my own system than pay them for hundred dollars i'd probably spit at them and buy some cheap cameras that i install myself and have a cheap phone that has a hot spot and literally spit at them and their freaking uh, terms and services no way in hell are you gonna tell me you, i am buying a car that has cameras but i'm not allowed to have those cameras and access to them unless i pay you 15 dollars a month and percent said yes to that. I can understand that. At the very least, I can understand somebody saying, I want to know what's going on in the parking lot from my hotel room because there's some shady people outside and I hear them messing with somebody's car. Are they stealing my catalytic converter? Let me see. I can get somebody wanting to pay for that. Ability to securely purchase... Yeah, you... Look, I can understand people wanting that. Do your own fucking system. It's cheaper and better. Products from the infotainment display. 10% said they want to be able to buy stuff on the internet using their car why i'm not going to use the, the amazon app on my phone i'm not going to use e-commerce i'm not going to use firefox or brave or chrome on my phone to navigate to a website and then log in <sighs> using password manager and then pay using the, sa the saved credentials i am then go i'm, I'm going to enter the credentials for all these shopping apps into my car and then i'm going to enter my credit card number on file again instead of using all the stuff that may already be saved in my phone I'm going to enter this into my car. Like I'm going to put my credit card number into my car. I'm going to you put like a password manager in there so that you have my login to all the websites I shop at. Like, no, I, I'm not I doing
I swear, like, these people, you know what they deserve? They deserve people to just hack the fucking cars. They deserve people to hack the cars. I Even if it voids your bloody insurance, like, uh, What is this? What kind of weird-ass greedy mofos are they? This is outrageous. This, this is not normal. The, like, why would people fall for this? Everything that, that they're offering, you can already do for cheap or for free with things that you already have doing that if i have a password manager with all my passwords saved for all these different shopping sites that's on my phone if i have my credit card info saved again this is all stuff that i can already do from the device that 99 percent of the population is carrying around in their pocket and already paying for not to mention the thing that baffles me is like why would you want your credit card credentials on so many freaking different places like do you seriously want someone to steal your car and also get access to your bank account to order shit from your car seriously like really like do people not think about security anymore am i the only one that doesn't want Want every system connected with everything and having like a one blob where people can like if they gain access to one thing they have access to everything in my life like i get comfort man but like this is such a security risk on top why would i pay you again for what i already get in my effing phone now again luckily most people are not interested in paying for this and i hope that the car companies start to understand it now when you scroll down it shows you over here that when it comes to interest the lowest interest comes from people who have gas cars, and then there's higher interest from people with plug-in hybrids or electric vehicles. They're saying that they, in this article, that they think that the reason people are more interested in these features with electric vehicles is because they are stuck charging for 20 or 40 minutes, whereas with a gas car, you just fill up and you're done. And usually- Bruh. Uh. You know, oh, I have an electric vehicle, so <laughs> I save money by spending time. Nice. Therefore, let me w get features to not save money either. Usually you're not sitting in the car using the infotainment while you're pumping gas. You're usually just sitting there doing this and then you're done pumping gas. So <sighs> I honestly, I honestly don't even think that's the case. This I think that baffling. people that are buying electric vehicles are buying newer technology. On average, people that are buying newer technology tend to be excited or slightly more interested in technological features and functionality even if they suck but if uh, if i was sitting in an electric vehicle and waiting for it to finish charging i wanted to watch something blackberry that's really obnoxious <laughs> stop if i were sitting blackberry <laughs> is that blackberry, his cat as here. well if i was sitting in my car and i wanted to watch something I would use the $10 mount holding my phone up to the windshield and I would turn on New Pipe or YouTube Vanced or whatever other service that it is that's uh, to watch whatever video that is that somebody linked me to. I'm not going to like scroll through my car for this. This is no purpose. If I have a Netflix subscription, I'll use the Netflix feature on my phone, the Netflix app on my phone, rather than viewing it from my car. It's just, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care to pay extra money for what it is I already have. The sad part of this is when it was broken down by age, it unfortunately appears to be my generation that is the, the, the cause of this, the driving factor. So when you look at people 60 to 69 years old, they have Jesus virtually no Christ, interest in man. this. They are, they are the green bar. <laughs> 60 to 69 people are like, fuck off. And then 50 to 59, they're kind of like, mm, I'd like to watch something on my in my car. Probably because they're not really used to phone technology. 40 to 49, damn, that's a lot of people that are interested in shit. And even worse is the 30 to 49ers. I, I am surprised. I would have thought under 30 are definitely more interested in that. They're, they probably just don't have as much dispensable income yet. Very interesting graph. 50 to 59, slightly more interest. 40 to 49, more interest. 30 to 39, the most interest. And then here's the interesting part. Under 30 years old actually has less interest. Yeah, So people that's under very 30 interesting. years old are less interested in these features than people from 30 to 39. So well, unfortunately- To be fair, I think the people under 30 are just more used to having, being in touch with your phone, being always on your phone, having tablets, having on the go gaming stuff and like being able to stream, right? So uh, it makes sense that 30 to 49ers are mostly the people that are interested because they're still tech savvy, but a lot of them might not really know what 
extent they can do with stuff. Very, very fascinating. It's still insane that people would rather pay this instead of getting like a phone holder that's like ten dollars. Unfortunately, seems to be my generation that's driving this whole everything as a subscription uh, garbage, which is. You know, not not a point of pride for me at, at this point in time. Now, one of the things that I appreciated is some of the comments on this on TechDirt is from people saying, make anything subscription-based, I'm not going to buy it. Then I will cut into the wiring harness and bypass your off switch with one of my own, which, again, is, in my opinion, common to the day. That's pretty much what I would do if somebody said that my car's heated seats are only going to work if I give them a certain amount of money a month. <laughs> I, Bro, I like if someone goes ahead and tells me that I am not gonna have access to something that's in my car unless I pay them a fee. I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna fly. I'm sorry. I do not come from um from a place where I'm just gonna like let you trample all over me and the thing that I bought. It reminds me of the freaking thing that I learned of a few days ago where a lady was saying that her printer at home, her physical printer, no longer works because she can't cancel her subscription so she can no longer print with a printer in her home and i was like what how did i miss that like huh like, i don't know where we're heading man i honestly don't know where we're heading this is insanity this is like this is fucked up this is not okay i'm going to cut into the car on blackberry cut the shit girl if you want attention you come down here <laughs> you come down here if you want attention you don't stand outside of other people's rooms and scream all night that's not very nice <laughs> She's sitting in front of other people's rooms and just scre like squealing at the top of her lungs. It's just so <laughs> stubborn. That's so cute. Next comment. This points out the safety risk of subscriptions too. You add in stuff like this and people are going to either yank it out or modify the software to enable features. Some might be competent mm -hmm. to do it correctly, but all the arguing for authorized service equals safety falls kind of flat when you're actively pushing things that encourage unauthorized service. And very true. If you're going to make it yep. so that when I buy my car, I'm buying my car, I'm buying heated seats, I'm buying all this functionality, but it doesn't work until I pay you. Well, you're encouraging me to now open my car up and fuck with it to get what it is I already paid for, which means more people are going to be screwing with their car. And yep. one of the primary arguments against right to repair is that people will hurt themselves and stop encouraging them to hack their shit to get what they already paid for. I am personally happy that the results of the survey demonstrate that a majority of people have no interest in paying more money per month for subscription features for their car. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious where you fall on this. Do you think that these are features that are actually worthwhile? No. Or do you think that just about everything listed here is stuff that you just don't want in your car? I have a feeling based on the comments that I read and based on the audience that I have cultivated here that on average think, the people in my audience are the types that probably believe the less computers in my car the better and uh, I agree with that one at this point in time looking at the way things are going I honestly can't blame them I can't blame them either but like for real if it's me right if I'm a person buying a car I I would be happy for those features if it didn't cost me extra like either charge me when I purchase it as an opt-in and then you modify my car to accommodate that that is fine or have it already bundled and I already paid for it once and it's there and it's a feature that you're just selling the car with personally I would be happy if it was an opt-in thing where you just opt in and you pay extra and not in the sense of a subscription because fuck that no in the sense of like you opt in to have it it is there you just paid extra x amount extra and it's your it's done it's done there's no you gotta pay me every month fuck that shit like why do we need subscription for that why would you need a subscription to have access to your heated seat when cars not like we have literal buttons that you, you you push the button and your car is getting heated like your seat is getting heated like why would you turn a button into a subscription excuse me like do you really think that shit sells or flies like why would you enable that let me know what you think in the comments down below <gasps> that's it for today and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> I like how he's looking at <laughs> I see you. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, man. This is like, this is, this is horror. I, I don't like where we're heading.